Well, hi everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Magic Gamer 74. I'm your host, Anthony Gamer, and today we're going to continue on where we left off with some grit cards from the Arabian Nights expansion. If this is your first time checking out this channel, welcome. On this uh, side, side channel of mine, we discuss Magic the Gathering, the collectible card game. I'm going to give you all kinds of helpful hints, um, some cool combos, and some cards that you may want to put in your decks. And who am I to uh, give all this information? I've been playing Magic the Gathering for over 25 years, so I know what I'm talking about. But, uh, before we get any further, I have a disclaimer. Uh, now, you can read about that in the comments section below. Uh, this will uh, alleviate some worry and also probably save me from getting some hate mail even though I probably will anyway. But if you don't like what I say and you think you can challenge me and you know better, meet me on Arena. My name is ClassicGamer74. You'll see that down here at the bottom of the screen. And I will meet you in the Arena. Until that time, let's check out the Arabian Nights. Alright, so in the previous episode I had discussed the white and black uh, cards from Arabian Nights, so I'm going to continue on uh, with the red, green artifacts and lands. Uh, now, like last time, I will suggest an alternative, uh, a cheaper one, in because again, some of the cards from Arabian Nights are quite expensive. And also, I will let you know if the cards have been reprinted. So, without further ado, let's begin with red. And our first card for today is Alibaba. It casts for one red. Uh, and you can, its fast effect is uh, tap one red, tap a wall. Um, the card itself is valued at $32 and it has been reprinted. Next, we have one of my favorite cards from Arabian Nights, and that is Ali from Cairo. Uh, he casts for two colorless and two red. And the card says damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. Uh, great card. I really wish I still had this one. Um, I used to use it in my decks, of course. Um, now, the card itself has really skyrocketed in value, like quite a few of the cards from Arabian Nights, and it is worth about $730. But I do have good news. Another card called Fortune Thief does the exact same thing. The card is... <laughs> is a lot cheaper and it costs for one more colorless so you know it's still good all right and next up we have her jackal now i always love to recommend one one creatures that cast for one awesome uh this card is worth about six dollars it has been reprinted and its fast effect is tap it uh, target creature can't be regenerated this turn and next up we have probably one of the single best cards in this expansion, if not one of the best cards in Magic, period, and that is the Curd Ape. It casts for one red, and it starts off as a 1-1 one, one creature, which, of course, is worth its uh, worth having it, period. The card re is worth about $14, and it has been reprinted. However, if... Now, the fast effect is Curd Ape gets plus one, plus two, as long as you control a forest. So, put this sucker, put four of these in a red and green deck, and you are good to go. Next up we have Rook Egg. It, it casts for three colorless and one red. Um, it's a zero three. Uh, when Rook Egg dies, create a four four red bird creature token with flying at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, uh, this card is worth about $30 and it has been reprinted. All right, so next we are moving on to the color green, and our first card for green is Desert Twister. Got kind of a high casting cost here, but listen. Four colorless and two green uh, destroy target permanent. And if you look at the card, it says any card in play. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, the card itself uh, is worth about $61, and it has been reprinted. All right, and next we have Drop of Honey. It casts for one green. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, destroy the creature with the least power. It can't be regenerated. If two or more creatures are tied for least power, you choose one of them. 
When there are no creatures on the battlefield, sacrifice drop of honey. Now, this enchantment card is quite expensive. It's worth around $800, but it has not been reprinted. All right, and next up, we have the Urnum Jin, uh, also known by the nickname Ernie. Uh, he casts for three colorless and one green. And he's, uh, again, remember, playing with Jin a lot of times does have some sort of drawback. Now with this one, he's a 4-5. Now with this one, at the beginning of your upkeep, target non-wall creature an opponent controls gains forest walk until your next upkeep. It can't be blocked as long as defending player controls a forest. Okay, so what do you do? Well, if you want to play with this card, and again, it's a 4-5, so it's pretty tough. Uh, I would recommend throwing in, after you cast this, this creature, your next upkeep when the person, your opponent's creature gains forest walk, play Armageddon. So then no more forests and they lose the forest walk. You use, lose your lands, but this can also be avoided. If you don't want to use Armageddon, use a lot of dual lands. Um, so anyway, uh, this creature, I mean, this card, excuse me, is a little on the steep side. It's worth around $415 but it has been reprinted a few times. Okay, next up we got a card that's a little more ex inexpensive, and of course it's uh, one of the commons, and that is the Gazban Ogre. It casts for one green, it's a 2-2 two -two creature, which is like, oh, cool. However, it does uh, <clears throat> have a drawback. At the beginning of your upkeep, if a player has more life than each other player, the player with the most life gains control of Gazban Ogre. Well, way around that, play it in a white, white, in green deck uh, that you're that's a life-giving deck i have one myself with my angels uh, my angel deck that really is about gaining life and this card won't set you back much it's only worth six dollars and it has been reprinted all right next we have metamorphosis this is uh, another common <clears throat> It casts for one green. It's a sorcery. It has an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Add, add X mana of any one color where one X is one plus the sacrificed creature's mana value. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells. Okay, this uh, card is worth about $6.60, and it has been reprinted. All right, next we have the Nas, Naps Asp. Excuse me, I had to say that slowly. All right, this 1-1 uh, one, one creature, which, of course, I love 1-1 one, one creatures that cast for one. Uh, this one casts for one green. Whenever Naf's Asp deals damage to a player, that player loses one life at the beginning of their next draw, unless they pay one before that draw step. Nice. Uh, poison creatures are always lots of fun, unless someone's playing it against you. Uh, this card is worth about $8, and it has been reprinted. All right, and next up, we have Sandstorm. Uh, this casts for one green. It's an instant. Sandstorm deals one damage to each attacking creature. Now, this is really good if you're playing against somebody with a goblin deck, as most goblins at least start off as 1-1 creatures. And let's say the guy, your opponent is coming at you with like 20 or 30 goblins that are 1-1s. Cast this. Done. And you'll probably watch your opponent cry. Anyway, this card is uh, another common. It's an $8 card, and it has been reprinted a few times. All right. All right, next is one of my very favorite cards in Magic, period, and that is Singing Tree. This creature casts for three colorless and one green. Uh, it's a 0-3, but tap it, and target attacking creature has base power 0 until end of turn. Love this card. I did own it at one time, and I don't anymore. I really wish I did, and I still have the proxy that I used to use. Uh, this card's very valuable. It's worth about $272. And I've been doing research to see if there's anything similar to it, and the only card that I could find that's kind of similar is Maze of Ith from The Dark. Um, it does kind of the same thing. It's also a little valuable, but not as valuable as Singing Tree, though. And unfortunately, Singing Tree was never reprinted. And the last green card for today is Wily Wolf. Uh, another one of my favorite cards. I love wolves, and I love the artwork. And I love the fact that the card's not expensive, either. Uh, and this 1-1 uh, creature casts for one colorless and one green. 
uh, tap it, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Now, in recent sets, there have been a lot of cards that target wolves and werewolf creatures. So if you are building a wolf slash werewolf deck, uh, especially with the Brothers War uh, expansion, this would be one that you would probably like to add to your club, add to that particular deck. Uh, this card is worth about $16, and it has been reprinted a few times. All right, so let's move on to the artifacts. Now, before we start, I'll warn you, the artifacts are all pretty expensive, but they have been reprinted quite a few times. So, Well, some of them have, so uh, just to let you know ahead of time. All right, and our first one for today is Aladdin's Lamp. It casts for 10. Now, you look if you look at the card at the top, you'll see that it, it says 5-5. Five, five. That must have been a print error of uh, some kind um anyway it's an artifact of course duh and uh tap x and tap it the next time you would draw a card this turn instead look at the top x cards of your library put all but one of them on the bottom of your library in a random order then draw a card x can't be zero okay this card uh, is worth around 57 dollars um and it has been reprinted all right, next up we have City in a Bottle. I love, I just love this card. Uh, I've owned it, but I've never played with it. I just love the artwork, and it's really cool. Anyway, it casts for two. Uh, whenever one or more uh, other non-token permanents with a name originally printed in a, the Arabian Nights expansion are on the battlefield, their controllers sacrifice them. Players can't cast spells or play lands with a name originally printed in the Arabian Nights expansion. Okay, now just imagine if you are playing against somebody who know who loves this expansion, okay, and they've got several cards from it in their deck, and you play this card, and it doesn't matter if they're playing proxies or if they're playing the reprints. As long as it has that scimitar in it, they can't play it. Um, yep. So, uh, this card is quite expensive it's currently worth around 367 dollars and it has not been reprinted all right and next up we have dancing scimitar again this is another fun card okay this one is an artifact creature it flies it casts for four colorless and it's a one five pretty awesome i think yeah definitely uh, this would be a great defender to have especially if you're playing against somebody who likes to play angels or has a lot of flyers nice card uh, this card is currently worth around a hundred dollars but it has been reprinted several times all right and next up we have flying carpet okay uh, this cast for four colorless uh, tap two gives one creature flying until end of turn nice um, so this is definitely a card to use if you are having a hard time getting flyers out or you realize you don't have a lot of them in your deck. So uh, this card is a little valuable. It's worth around $70, but it has been reprinted several times. All right, and next up we have Pyramids. This is a card that doesn't really get mentioned much um, from people that I know that are into Arabian Nights. All right, it is... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it casts for six, colorless, um, tap two, choose one, destroy target aura attached to a land. Uh, the next time target land would be destroyed this turn, remove all damage marked on it instead. So a land saver, kind of nice. Uh, this card is quite expensive though. It's worth around $195 and unfortunately it was never reprinted. All right, and our final artifact today is one of the coolest cards in Magic. By far, definitely love this card. Okay, it casts for five colorless. Uh, cat, um, pay five, uh, tap, exile ring of Maroof. The next time you would draw a card this turn, instead put a card you own from outside the game into your hand. Oh, that is so awesome. I actually had this card and I had a proxy of it. And boy, does it make people mad, but... Oh, God, I wish... Uh, unfortunately, this card is quite expensive. It costs $210, and sadly, it was not reprinted. And honestly, I don't think there's a card that does anything like it. 
uh, which doesn't surprise me, but again, if you can get a chance to get this card, get it. And finally, now we are at land, and much like the, <clears throat> excuse me, like the artifacts, uh, several of these land are quite expensive, are very expensive, uh, and they have been reprinted. Uh, thankfully, some of them. Uh, and the first one is one that has been reprinted, and that is City of Brass. With this card, you tap the, uh, excuse me, whenever City of Brass becomes tapped, it deals one damage to you. Tap, add one mana of any color. Nice. All right, this card is one of the most expensive cards in Arabian Nights. It currently is worth around $589. Yikes. But it has been reprinted a few times. Uh, but the reprints themselves are, well, not expensive, expensive, but they cost a little bit. Like the Chronicles uh, version is around $13, and the 5th edition is around $14. All right, and next we have Desert. All right, uh tap to add one color colorless mana tap desert deals one damage to target attacking creature activate only during the end of combat step so in other words after they've done their damage then you tap it and it does one damage afterwards so uh, perhaps like a goblin hits you and yay you took you took damage but then he, you destroy him before he makes it back. Uh, so anyway, a uh, pretty cool card. Um, it's worth around $18, and it has been reprinted a, a few times. All right, and our next card is Diamond Valley. This is a card I've always loved, but I never did own. All right, so tap, sacrifice a creature. You gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. Not bad. Uh, however, this card is very expensive. It's worth around $830, and it has never been reprinted. All right, next we have Elephant Graveyard. I love this card. I just love the artwork. I never owned it, but like I guess I just dig the artwork. Okay, uh, tap to add one colorless, and tap regenerate target elephant. Uh, this would be good if you are playing green or white. There are elephants and mammoths in both. So, um, you know, if you want to pay the little bid, it might come in handy. Uh, this card is worth right around $451, and unfortunately, it was not reprinted. All right, and next up, we have another card, uh, one of my cards I love, and this is Island of Wok Wok. I just like saying it, Island of Wok Wok. Anyway, uh, this land, you tap it, target creature with flying, has base power zero until end of turn. So it's kind of similar in some ways to Singing Tree. Uh, nice card. Love the artwork. Just like saying Wok Wok. Anyway, uh, this card's quite expensive. It's worth around $450, and unfortunately, it was not reprinted. And our final card for today. Yep, you've made it to the end. And that is Oasis. Tap this card. Prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn. Nice. This card's not as expensive as some of the other lands. It's currently worth around $38. And it has been reprinted a couple times. In our next episode, we will be discussing great cards from one of my favorite sets and one of the few sets that I have complete, and that is The Dark. Well, that brings this episode of Magic Gamer 74 to a close. I really hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, let us know by giving me a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click that little bell icon down there so you'll be notified when I upload new material. Also, if you'd like to game with me. I am on Magic the Gathering Arena. My username is ClassicGamer74. You'll see that right down here in front of me. And I look forward to meeting you in the arena. All right, Planeswalkers. Until next time, this has been Anthony Gamer wishing you a great week, and I will see you in the arena. Bye, everyone.